want to thank folks at Judson Memorial Church. I want to thank folks at Judson Memorial Church for coming out in solidarity at the last minute. For coming out in solidarity at the last minute. And providing us with this beautiful space. And providing us with this beautiful space. Without further ado. Without further ado. We have with us today. We have with us today. Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy. Mic check. Thank you, Arundhati. Thank you, Arundhati. For your time with us today. For your time with us today. During this very crucial. During this very crucial. Week of action. Week of action. Lansaram. 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 <laughs> Mic check. Mic check. Thank you, uh, Judson Church. Thank you, Judson Church, and thank you all for being here. Yesterday morning, the police cleared Zuccotti Park, but today the police Zuccotti Park. But today the people are back. But today the people are back. The police should know that this protest. The police should know that this protest is not a battle for territory is not a battle for territory. We are not fighting for the right to, co to occupy a park here or there. We are not fighting for the right to occupy a park here or there. We are fighting for justice. We are fighting for justice. Justice not just for the people of the United States, but for everybody. But for everybody. But for everybody. But for everybody. What you have achieved since September 17. What you have achieved since September 17. When the Occupy movement began in the U.S. When the Occupy movement began in the U.S. Is to introduce a new imagination. Is to introduce a new imagination. A new political language. A new political language. Into the heart of empire. Into the heart of empire. You have reintroduced You have reintroduced the right to dream the right to dream in a system that tried to turn everybody into zombies in a system that tried to turn everybody into zombies mesmerized into equating mindless consumerism mesmerized into equating mindless consumerism with happiness and fulfillment with happiness and fulfillment. As a writer, let me tell you. As a writer, let me tell you. This is an immense achievement. This is an immense achievement. And I cannot thank you enough. And I cannot thank you enough. We were talking about justice. We were talking about justice. Today as we speak. Today as we speak. The army of the United States the Army of the United States is waging a war of occupation in Iraq and Afghanistan. Is waging a war of occupation in Iraq and Afghanistan. U.S. drones are killing civilians in Pakistan and beyond. U.S. drones are killing civilians in Pakistan and beyond. Tens of thousands of U.S. troops and death squads. Tens of thousands of U.S. troops and death squads. Are moving into Africa. If spending trillions of dollars of your money, if spending trillions of dollars of your money to administer occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan, to administer occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan, is not enough. Is not enough. A war against Iran is being talked up. A war against Iran is being talked up. Ever since the Great Depression. Ever since the Great Depression, the manufacture of weapons, the manufacture of weapons, and the export of war, and the export of war, have been key ways in which the United States have been key ways in which the United States has stimulated its economy. 
has stimulated its economy. Just recently, just, just recently, under President Obama, under President Obama, the U.S. made the U.S. made a sixty billion dollar arms deal with Saudi Arabia. A sixty billion dollar arms deal with Saudi Arabia. Moderate Muslims, right? Moderate Muslims, right? It hopes to sell thousands of bunker busters to the UAE. It hopes to sell thousands of bunker busters to the UAE. It has sold five billion dollars worth of military aircraft to my country. It has sold five billion dollars worth of military aircraft to my country. India. India. It has more poor people than all the poorest countries of Africa put together. Which has more poor people than all the poorest countries of Africa put together. All these wars, all these wars, from the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, from the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to Vietnam, Korea, and Latin America, to Vietnam, Korea, and Latin America, have claimed millions of lives. Have claimed millions of lives. All of them fought. All of them fought to secure the American way of life. To secure the American way of life. Today we know. Today we know that the American way of life. That the American way of life. The model that the rest of the world is meant to aspire towards. The model that the rest of the world is meant to aspire towards. Has resulted. Has resulted. In 400 people, owning the wealth, owning the wealth of half of the population of the United States, of half the population of the United States, it has meant thousands of people being turned out of their homes. It has meant thousands of people being turned out of their homes and their jobs, and their jobs. While the U.S. government, while the U.S. government bailed out banks and corporations. Bailed out banks and corporations. American International Group (AIG). American International Group (AIG) alone, alone was given 182 billion dollars. Was given 182 billion dollars. The Indian government worships U.S. economic policy. The Indian government worships U.S. economic policy. As a result of 20 years of the free market economy, of 20 years of the free market economy, today 100 of India's richest people, today 100 of India's richest people, own assets worth one quarter of the country's GDP. Own assets worth of a quarter of the country's GDP. While more than 80 percent of the people. While more than 80% of the people live on less than 50 cents a day, live on less than 50 cents a day. 250,000 farmers, 250,000 farmers, driven into a spiral of debt, debt, have committed suicide. Have committed suicide. We call this progress. We call this progress. And now think of ourselves as a superpower. And now think of ourselves as a superpower. Like you, we are well qualified. Like you, we are well qualified. We have nuclear bombs. We have nuclear bombs. And obscene inequality. And obscene inequality. The good news is. The good news is. That people have had enough. That people have had enough. And are not going to take it anymore. The Occupy movement. The Occupy movement has joined thousands of other resistance movements. Has joined thousands of other resistance movements all over the world. All over the world. In which the poorest of people. In which the poorest of people are standing up. Are standing up. And stopping the richest corporations. And stopping the rip richest corporations in their tracks. In their tracks. Few of us dream. Few of us dream that we would see you. 
that we would see you, the people of the United States, the people of the United States, on our side, on our side, trying to do this, trying to do this, in the heart of empire, in the heart of empire. I don't know how to communicate. I don't know how to communicate the enormity of what this means. The enormity of what this means. They, the one percent. They, the one percent. Say that we don't have demands. Say that we don't have demands. Perhaps they don't know. Perhaps they don't know. That our anger alone. That our anger alone would be enough to destroy them. Would be enough to destroy them. But here are some things. But here are some things. A few pre-revolutionary thoughts I had. A few pre-revolutionary thoughts I had. For us to think about together. For us to think about together. We want to put a lid on this system that manufactures inequality. We want to put a lid on the system that manufactures inequality. We want to put a cap on the unfettered accumulation of wealth and property. We want to put a cap on the unfettered accumulation of wealth and property. By individuals as well as corporations. By individuals as well as corporations. As capitalists and Luddites. As capitalists and Luddites. We demand. We demand. One. One. An end to cross ownership in businesses. An end to cross ownership in businesses. For example. For example. Weapons manufacturers cannot own TV stations. Weapons manufacturers cannot own TV stations. Mining corporations cannot run newspapers. Mining corporations cannot run newspapers. Business houses cannot fund universities. Business houses cannot fund universities. Drug companies cannot control public health funds. Drug companies cannot control public health funds. Two. Two. Natural resources and essential infrastructure. Natural resources and essential infrastructure. Water supply, electricity, health and education. Water supply, electricity, health and education. Cannot be privatized. Cannot be privatized. Three. Three. Everybody must have the right to shelter, education and health care. Everybody must have the right to help to health care and education. Four. Four. The children of the rich cannot inherit their parents' wealth. The children of the rich cannot inherit their parents' wealth. This struggle has reawakened our imagination. This struggle has reawakened our imagination. Somewhere along the way. Somewhere along the way. Capitalism reduced the idea of justice to mean just human rights. Capitalism reduced the idea of justice to mean just human rights. And the idea of dreaming of equality. And the idea of dreaming of equality became blasphemous. Became blasphemous. We are not fighting. We are not fighting. To just tinker. To just tinker. Reforming with reforming a system that needs to be replaced. A system that needs to be replaced. As a capist. As a capist and a Lidite. A Lidite. I salute your struggle. I salute your struggle. Salam and Zindabad. Salam and Zindabad.
Yes. occupy Wall Street, which I'm assuming you mean is an abstraction. It's a systemic change that is required. How do young people across the world join in creating this kind of a systemic change? Right, as a best practice. As a best practice. In the world. In the world. Um, see, I think that, I think that uh, for, for, for many, many years, the media in America has conspired to keep the people of the United States ignorant about what's going on in the rest of the world. There have been huge struggles and there are enormous struggles going on across the world. I, I, I come from India and I can tell you that the whole place is in ferment. And for, for us, this is already a practice. For us, it's already the fact that that, uh, you know, when, when 200,000 people gather in a village in India to protest a mining corporation, it's not even reported in the local papers. But when, you know, 1,000 US citizens gather on Wall Street, it's almost a revolution. <laughs> and, and that's important. It's important for us. I'm not trying to minimize it. I'm saying, you know, this exchange of solidarities is already practice. And I think that the movement here has, has to find ways of reaching out into other communities within the United States who, who perhaps are almost too marginalized to even join the occupation. You know, there must be, I, I, I don't live here and I haven't, you know, I haven't traveled a lot in the United States, but when I do, Sometimes I ask my friends, is there apartheid here? You know, where are the black folks? They, they, they're not 
around, you don't see them in restaurants or at meetings and so on. But all these solidarities have to be made because that's how it will come, the practice will come. In India today, the poorest people in the world have stopped the richest mining corporations in their tracks because they're just putting their bodies on the line. In, in the US, I would love to see a movement that's, that stopped the transport of weapons that actually, that actually locked out the weapons manufacturer that did not allow the missiles to be moved onto ships to make war against other people to stimulate the economy here. Um, yes, ma'am. The question is, what are your thoughts on the Anna Hazari movement in India these days? I don't know whether, um, how many people know about it, but it, it's a, a movement that captured the imagination of uh, the Indian media, especially the corporate media and the Indian middle class, uh, a movement against corruption. Um, I guess the, the, the closest equivalent would be the Tea Party movement here. But essentially they are talking about making, making an unfair system work more smoothly and be less corrupt. So, uh, so while it's easy for people to, to take a sort of global view of these people's uprisings in India and in the Middle East, and in America and in the United States, you, you actually have to look at these things quite separately. And while an uprising was happening in India, there was not one single slogan against a single corporation. It was, it was in fact sponsored, at, uh, and um, by sponsored I mean supported hugely 24 hours a day for weeks together by the corporate media. Uh, it was a movement very uh, heavily supported by the right wing. And of course there were a lot of poor people who joined, you know, hoping that somehow it would reduce prices or, or bring them some kind of justice because that was the hype. But all that fell away actually. So uh, to put it, um, you know, unsubtly, I found it rather repulsive. <laughs> okay, I think we have time for just two more questions. Yes. How is it possible for the Occupy movement to clear out this pipeline between us and the people, the comrades in the forest? How is it possible to, to show solidarity? And, and what would, would we gain by doing that? Well, uh, I don't think you need to clear out the pipeline. You know, I think that uh, there was a time when I was among the people who, who thought that things like the World Social Forum that were happening, this, 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 uh, this uh, effort to have real, real sort of logistical so solidarity was very important. And then I found that all the best activists were just turning into travel agents, you know, booking people's tickets from to Allegra to Bombay and mm -hmm. you know organizing these meetings the whole thing was becoming NGO eyes I think uh, I think it's important for everybody to fight their own battles with the same imagination that people are fighting within other places but it's important for you to dismantle things here and, and allow people to fight their battles there while you understand each other. But I think the, one of the main things I would like to say is that people need to, to expose the connections between corporations, media, NGOs, all of this. You know, for example, in India there's a mine, there's an iron ore mining company which is displacing thousands of indigenous people with its steel plants and its mines. The CEO of that company is a member of parliament. He's also the chairman of the National Flag Foundation because he won the right to fly, fly the national flag on his house. They also have a global law school where they teach you know, environmental law and all the biggest 
sort of international lawyers come there as faculty. They are now going to start a global school of public policy. They also um, support a lot of cutting edge artists working in stainless steel. They, they, they recently held a protest workshop where all the activists and poets and radical people came to recite their poetry and talk about protest. So you see, these people, uh, these corporations generate so much money that they can be the governor in the government, they can have the flag, they can have the media, they can be the resistance and the oppressors, they can be everybody. You know? It's like a Hindu mythological in which you can call the gods and the demons and everybody can be everybody. So these are the links that need to be broken. So that the media, for example, it's not that journalists are bad people or editors are evil, but just the way it's structured. Everything comes from corporate advertising. So how can you expect it to function otherwise? It's structurally built to, to perpetuate a system that is creating the problem. And can the imagination that created the problem solve it? I don't think so. the people of the United States, but for everybody. But for everybody. But for everybody. But for everybody. What you have achieved since September 17. What you have achieved since September 17. When the Occupy movement began in the U.S. When the Occupy movement began in the U.S. Is to introduce a new imagination. Is to introduce a new A new political language. Into the heart of empire. Into the heart of empire. You have... Yesterday morning the police cleared Zuccotti Park. But today... Zuccotti Park. But today the people are back. But today the people are back. The police should know that this protest... The police should know that this protest is not a battle for territory is not a battle for territory we are not fighting for the right to co to occupy a park here or there we are not fighting for the right to occupy a park here or there we are fighting for justice we are fighting for justice I want to thank folks at Judson Memorial Church for coming out in solidarity at the last minute for coming out in solidarity at the last minute and providing us with this beautiful space and providing us with this beautiful space without further ado without further ado we have with us today we have with us today Arundhati Roy Arundhati Roy Mic check. Thank you, Arundhati. Thank you, Arundhati. For your time with us today. For your time with us today. During this very crucial. During this very crucial. Week of action. Week of action. Lan salam. Lan salam. Lan salam. <laughs> Mic check. Mic check. Thank you, uh, Judson Church. Thank you, Judson Church, and thank you all for being here. You have reintroduced, you have reintroduced the right to dream. The right to dream. In a system that tried to turn everybody into zombies. In a system that tried to turn everybody into zombies. Mesmerized into equating mindless consumerism. Mesmerized into equating mindless consumerism. Happiness and fulfillment. With, With happiness and fulfillment. As a writer, let me tell you. As a writer, let me tell you. This is an immense achievement. 
This is an immense achievement.